What's going on everyone? Kayura build guide and how to use her. She's in faction dark, time because she's a collab hero and mythical. Level 70 max stats. The first one is an assassin class, star bright sword maiden. This one has higher in than the other class. Other class last descendant is a holy class. Holy class however has a little bit more magic defense. If you compare stats alone the assassin class is more superior because the last is descendant. The holy class gives you more attack, but she doesn't use attack. However, it doesn't mean that the holy class is not as good as the assassin one. It's, it all depends how you want to use her and what is her role in your um, strategy. The assassin class, obviously, you want to kill stuff with her. But then the holy class, she can be used as a semi-support and a damage dealer. Talent, Stardust Glow. When attacking and entering battle, ignore 10, 13, 16, and 20% at 6 stars of target's magic defense. So that's 10% less than Dark Reaper. So very scary. And critical hit rate and critical damage are increased by 10, 13, 16, 20% at 6 stars. After taking AoE damage, restore HP to self and ally with lowest HP equal to 1.5 2, 2.5, and 3 times Kayura's in. It is important to know that her killing ability is based off of her crit rate and crit damage over her in. Her healing based off more of her in. I mean, she does need in for her damage, but she relies a little bit more with her crit rate and crit damage is what I meant. Very high investment character when in terms of enchanting, so she needs in, she needs crit. Bonding requirement. Since she's a collab hero, she doesn't need any help from other characters. All you need to do is fulfill these requirements. Skills. As I mentioned in the introduction, she can play as a support and an assassin, mainly because of skills choices that she has. She is the first assassin who has Gospel. Gospel is cost 2, cooldown 2, range 3, span single. Basically, it's a faction buff. Active skill. Boost the attack in and defense of a single unit by 20% and grants the unit immunity to all debuffs. Last two turns. Faith. When actively attacking, damage tell plus 15% and heal the ally unit with the lowest HP by in times 2. Cleanse. Cost 2, cooldown 2, range 2, span single. This is usually, this is more useful in PvE. Magic damage. Attacks a single enemy, dealing 1.5 times damage. Effective against Demon. Dispel 2 buffs from the target after battle. Sneak. Cost 1. Passive. When attacking and entering battle, crit plus 10% and damage taken minus 20%. Okay, this skill you'll probably never bring it. It's not that useful in PV nor PvP. Redemption. The second character who has redemption. The first one, I mean, I should say the only one is Chris. Redemption. Cost 2, cooldown 1, range 2, span single. Magic damage attacks a single enemy, dealing 1.5 times damage. After battle, heals all allies, excluding the caster for 2 times casters in. Melee soldiers also attack. Very powerful skill. If you need more healing, especially in PvE, this will heal every single ally on the map. Her exclusive skill, Star Price Sword. Cost 2, cooldown 3, range 3, span single. Magic damage attacks a single enemy dealing 1.5 times damage before entering battle soldier range plus one after ending action dispel two debuffs and restore 1.5 times in hp to allies within two blocks of self super crazy basically you have three range attack and then your when you end your action you have the liana talent dispel two debuffs and restore hp Star Flash, cost 1. I think if you play PvP, you will bring this every single time. But PvE, you probably don't need to because you do have a tank to protect you. Passive, after actively attacking in battle, teleports self to a square within 3 spaces. Kinda like Omega, Magic Flash, cost 2, cooldown 2, range 3, span single. Magic damage, ignores guard and attacks a single enemy, dealing 1.4 times damage. Before entering battle, soldier range plus 1. After ending action, if this unit is on a defensive terrain, gain smoke. All damage taken minus 30%, last one turn. A 3 range assassin skill. 
Awakening skill. Star Sword Scream. Okay, I actually don't think these are the actual translation. These are not the actual English name for these skills, but I just copy everything from Wiki Grisser. So if it's a little bit different than in game, I apologize in advance. Cooldown 3, Cost 3, Range 3, Span Single. So both of these SSR Ronin heroes, they have a very, very short 3C cooldown. Two parts to this. Passive, when you have at least 5 ally units in plus 10%, move plus 3, hero physical damage taken minus 20%. The 5 allies, that's including Kayura. I would also assume when it comes to allied units, summon would also work. For example, Sky Archer from Liana, that would also count as a ally unit. Unfortunately, I don't have the hero yet to test that out. Active skill, magic damage, ignores guard and attacks a single enemy for 1.6 times damage. Before entering battle, soldier range plus 1. After ending turn, dispel 3 buffs and restore 3 times in HP to allies within 3 blocks. Very straightforward, this is a stronger version of Star Bright Sword. And the cooldown is exactly the same, which means there's no reason to ever bring Star Bright Sword over her 3C. Okay, now we're going to talk about her build. Very straightforward. So recommended weapon, Pale Staff to increase the single target damage skills. All her skills are single target. So this is a very, very strong weapon for her. And also gives a chance to apply a debuff. Scepter of Divinity It's like one of the most popular single target staff out there right now. So increases her skill by one. However, you do lose some in. But it's okay, again, she relies a lot on her crit rate and crit damage. Next, we have Gift of Eternal Life. This one is for Holy Class. This allows her to supply more healing. So if you want her to be your um, semi-healer, Gift of Eternal Life might be better than the other choices. Since you're using Holy Class anyways, the chance of you killing an opponent might be a little bit harder. I mean, I would just assume that if you choose to use her Holy Class, you do want her to be your um, support. And if you don't have any of these staffs, Red Moon and Blue Moon would do decently fine. Recommended armor. Okay, so last right can't go wrong. Last right is always the best armor for like whoever can carry it. Azure Legend is like, if you don't have last right, it's like the second best. And for Holy Class, since Holy Class cannot carry last right, I think Twilight Guard is good. Well, there's also Tenyo, that's okay, but I think Twilight would be better in this case because she has two skill that allows her to heal after taking an action. And when she takes AoE damage, she also heals the person with the lowest HP. So Twilight Guard will increase her healing ability much, much more. Recommend the helmet. King's Crown hands down is her best when it comes to assassin class. The reason why is because whenever, if you bring the 1C, when she finish her attack, she will teleport back to, um, well, 3 range, back to her ally, and then her ally will gain the um, King's Crown buff. There's also Doomsday that's worth mentioning, just so that you can heal block. You have a chance to heal block, I should say. Okay, so these two helmet is for Holy Class, Glory of the World. When you have mixed troops, you will get your healing back by 10% before battle. And then Tenyo, same reason as King's Crown, except you get a random buff. Recommend accessories. When it comes to a single target magic damage dealer, I think Dimensional Jewel is one of the best accessory out there. Especially when it comes to Kayura, Kayura, she has very low cooldown with her strong attacks. So I think Dimensional Jewel would be one of her best um, accessory. Next we have True Cross. Why True Cross? First, either Assassin or Holy, it increases her healing effect. Secondly, when fighting against Demon and Mage units in Magic Defense and Defense plus 20%. So this is actually, as you should say, this will help you one-shot mages much easier, even if they have Sorceress. And if there's ever a Demon Bozo or Demon whatever, this can also help you destroy them. Downside is that you're not going to get any in from this. Okay, last but not least, Twilight Star. Okay, before I talk about Twilight Star, you have to know that when you break well, for Assassin, because she is an Assassin, so if she is to bring Assassin troops, you need to know that you're not getting the Shadow Strike tech 
in the assassin training field. You're also not getting the killing breath tech. Only applies when you're attacking a unit with 100% HP. It's all preference. Let's say if you have to fight against someone with last right, I would say Twilight would be better. Or if you have to fight against a sorceress, then I think Twilight is also better. At the end of the day, it depends on how strong your Kayura is. I don't think she needs a Twilight to one-shot opponent, but it again, it all depends how strong your training is, your enchant, all those stuff. Okay, now it comes to enchant choices. Once again, she relies a lot on her crit, so Meteor can possibly be one of her best enchant. Breeze is also very good. If you pro a Breeze, you can potentially snipe someone out of an um, unexpected situation. I will require a lot of int, a lot of crazy int in your enchant. Full Moon also gives you very good damage output, but again, when it comes to Full Moon, I usually recommend it for PvE instead. Okay, enchant stats. When it comes to weapon, armor, helm, prioritize her int just like any mage and then HP, and then whichever defense. When it comes to accessory, make sure you have crit. If you don't have crit, your accessory is not enchant properly. The higher, the better, but I think minimum you need around 11% to 12%. Mastery stone stats, weapon and accessory, please put skill in it and over like defense or magic defense. And armor and helmet, don't put skill in it. Both armor and helmet, even if you put skill fully maxed, when they combine together, that's probably only 1% of crit damage. So that's not worth it. Sorry, crit rate, I meant. Better off getting a little bit more defense or magic defense. Okay, Arena PvP Stone, this is the only setup that you want. In HP, skill, crit rate, crit damage, maximum crit. Okay, we're coming close to the end of the video. Soldier Choices, the Faceless. The Faceless is very strong because before entering battle causes the enemy to have a 15% chance of being critically hit. And in general, faces attack and critical hit rate plus 15%. And the next sorceress, sorceress when it's at max 100% HP always deals amazing damage, especially when it comes to single target damage dealer. And the honorable mention is dark elf. But I didn't put them in here because it's really match dependent. And um, for example, if you have to face against a character with angels and you probably don't want to use a sorceress and you feel like faces is not strong enough to kill, so the archer would do a better job. So yeah, it really depends. Match dependent and the character is new, so we all have to learn together. All right, that is it for this video, everyone. I hope you guys find this video helpful. If you like what you're watching, don't forget to share, like, and subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching, and bye-bye.